welcome to this tutorial and in this video I will be doing practice problem practice problem 14.1 and in this question we ask to find the transfer function given a circuit which looks something like this there is a resistor R and here we have an inductor and across that inductor we have VO, right? And we asked to find the transfer function VO divided by VS. And just as some background information, a transfer function is basically a function which describes the relationship between an input and an output. So you can see this as multiplying the input by some function H to produce the output. So if you have and the output and you have an input you can find the transfer function and that is exactly what we want to do we want to use the output vo and the input vs to actually derive the relationship between the two right so now we're working in the frequency domain as given the question that vs can be assumed to be vm cosine of omega t. Now working in the frequency domain and we have to convert all components into impedances. So a resistor stays as, as R and the units are ohm and for the inductor we have to say J omega L. If we had a capacitor it would be 1 over J omega C. So you have to know these formulas to do the conversions. So now, since we're only dealing with an inductor and a resistor, we can leave this one out for now and only focus on these two. Now that we have those two formulas, I think we can now start with our problem. So to find VO, if you look at the circuit, we have this circuit, everything and everything is in series. So you can just, to find your VO, you can just do voltage division. And finally, to find your ratio of VO divided by VS, you can divide both sides by VS, and your result should be something like this. And you can now substitute the impedance value to get this. And from this, we can now also get plots for the magnitude and the phase. So transfer functions can also be represented as magnitude plot and a phase plot and this is because we're dealing with the frequency domain and the terms at the top and at the bottom are complex numbers or phases and as you know a phaser is a magnitude and a phase so that is exactly what we're going to do next we want to transform this transfer function into something which we can interpret and get the magnitude and the phase plot so now in this form, you will see that this is, we're now in the frequency domain, and we denote it with something like that. And there are quite a few ways that you can, the textbook only stops here, as, as, as this is also a valid representation of the transfer function, but you can take this a step further and actually convert this using so for our RL circuits we know that omega zero is this so you can take it a step further and actually divide everything by r and this will be your result and after that you are going to have j omega divided by omega r divided by 1 plus j omega divided by omega naught. Now we're dividing by omega naught because if you check L over R over there is a reciprocal of that. So now we're just dividing by it because we have a reciprocal of it. So now you can leave your transfer function in this form and this is helpful so that we can analyze the relationship between the frequency 
and whatever you're interested in finding. Let's say this would be a magnitude plot. So this would be a magnitude plot, and magnitude is denoted by that here, the frequency. Now with the frequency, we can we can also take it as this ratio as the textbook does. So if you check the example that comes before this problem, this ratio is altered from zero to about hundred, but they skip a few steps. And from that, you can actually you can actually see what happens to this function as they change the values of omega and omega naught, right? So you can see that from, from stepping through the values of the ratio itself, or just by stepping through the ratio, uh, just the value of omega. So that is exactly what we're going to do. But now let's just use the this ratio. And using the ratio, because the bottom part is, is a fixed value, right? We can also just only focus on omega. So let's do that. Let's see what happens to this function if we were to increase the value of omega or if we were to increase the frequency, that is, and put in another way. So now if you increase this value here when finding the magnitude, so when finding the magnitude, let's first, uh, I think it's best to first find expressions for the magnitude interface. So for the magnitude, you'd have the magnitude of the top, so the magnitude of the numerator divided by the magnitude of the denominator. This is how you deal with complex numbers of phases. So you find the magnitude of each separately. So you'd have this at the top. You'd have this at the bottom. And from this, you'd see that the expression will now come down to this. Now that we have this expression, you will notice that we now have the ratio that we want to work with in terms of the magnitude. And we can start thinking about a few things as we go along. And you can also get definite values for, for this function using a tool like Python or anything else that you might have at your disposal. Or you might actually look at this using your calculator and stepping through the values. So to start with, you might want to start at omega zero, right? So let's see, if omega is zero, or if you substitute zero where you have the ratio of omega divided by omega naught, and step through, the first value you'd get is zero. Now let's take another value, let's say 10. Putting 10 where you see the ratio of omega of omega naught, we get a value of about 0 0.995 so let's say 10 is something there so we're now doing a sketch not a, an exact plot right now let's take this value up and put 100 where we see omega divided by omega naught let's see what happens if you check it's still somewhere along that magnitude 0 0.99999 Nine five, and if you put a large value like a thousand, it's still along that path. Just that you have more trailing nines, so you can see that as you increase this value, this approaches one. So that is how you actually interpret this. As you increase your values using your calculator or any other tool which you have at your disposal you will see that this approaches 1, but it doesn't actually get to 1. And that is how you interpret your magnitude plot. Now in terms of the phase, to find the phase, since we're dealing with complex numbers of phases, the one at the top has its own uh, phase, and the one at the bottom has its own phase. Now to find the phase, the resulting phase of this, 
the phase of a top of the numerator has to subtract the phase of the denominator. So this is just complex number of phasor algebra, which you have to learn. So let's check the phase of the element at the top. And to find the phase, it's a, just as a reminder, if you have x plus j, y, you're going to take the arc time of the imaginary component divided by the real component. So that is what we're going to do for each. Now looking at our transfer function, we only have the imaginary part at the top. So for the numerator part, we're going to have arc term of that divided by zero, subtract the phase of the denominator, and we can get that from this expression here. So the imaginary part is over here, the real part is over here. So it's going to be the octane of omega over omega naught divided by the real part of one. So now if you analyze this, this part here, or if you analyze everything that's going to happen next, we just have to look back to our turn graph. It looks something like this. And at about 90 degrees towards infinity, you have something like that. So tan would be the relationship. In tan, you put in an angle and you get a y value, right? But with octan, you put in a y value and you get a corresponding angle. You go backwards. So that is what we are about to do over here. So given that fact, let's see what we can do here. So zero, if zero divide, we have infinity, right? Infinity is not a real number, but we can do an approximation. And if we check this graph again, it approaches 90 degrees at infinity. It doesn't touch, it just approaches as this grows and grows and grows and grows. So you can approximate, or you can safely say that this is about 90 degrees, and it's going to subtract octane of omega divided by omega naught. And that'll be your phase, and that'll be your description of the phase. Now let's start sketching this. So let's start looking at this. I'm just going to keep the ten graph over here for reference, just so we see what we can do. So we have a phase plot now. And we're also increasing the, the frequency, right? We can focus, as I said, we can only focus on omega, but that, that is fine for now. And we have 90 degrees, just like that. Now, starting at zero, if you take the octane at zero, we want to find the value or the angle at zero. And if you check zero, you have zero, zero. So, Basically, that is what we have over there. So you have 90 degrees subtract zero. So you're going to start at 90 degrees when you have zero. Now, as we go along, let's see what happens. Now, if you were to take a value, any value, you can use your calculator now and say octane of maybe 100. Um, you'd see octane of maybe 100. You'll see that you now have 90 degrees subtract about 89.427 or something like that. So this is going towards zero. So you can take your response as something that goes like that. So we're only sketching, we're only finding the trend of our graph. So as you increase the value of your frequency over here, this value also goes like that. It also approaches 90 degrees. So as you go along, it will approach 90 degrees. This part will approach 90 degrees which means there will be a cancellation of that 90 degrees over there. So we are actually approaching zero as we go along or as we increase our frequency. And that would be your phase plot, or that would be your sketch of the phase plot. So you just have to look at your transfer function for these and analyze this in that way to find your magnitude and your phase plots. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, just as an extra step, I thought I'd provide the plots using Python. So I basically put the formulas in Python, and I'm now going to plot just so we check.
that our transfer functions are correct or our sketches are correct. You can also check in the textbook and if you check our magnitude plot, it does approach 1 as we increase the values and that is what we expected. Now if we put in the face plot, let's put in the face plot and see how it behaves or what actually happens to it. So as you can see, it starts somewhere, it approaches 90 somewhere there, right? And at that point, we actually see that it decreases and approaches zero as we increase the value of the frequency. And that is what we expected exactly. So those are your two plots, the magnitude and the phase plot.